that all things are possible if we put our trust in you. Thank you for Resurrection Sunday. Thank you for blessing us to see another Resurrection Sunday. We are grateful for your blessings for this whole year up until today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Well, happy Easter and happy Resurrection Sunday. And we thank the Lord for all his blessings in the year. Today is Easter Sunday, so we are not going to be long today. Amen. Oh, yes. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's look at resurrection this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There's a song we have like that. Lo, I tell you a mystery, yes. It says in verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. Amen. We shall not all sleep. Or we shall not all be dead. But we shall be changed. Amen. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Have you sung this song already? Ah, I wonder why you haven't sung this song on the Resurrection Sunday. Yes. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. This information cannot be found on the internet. It cannot be found anywhere. Any physics, science, discovery, history, nothing. Only the Bible is telling us a mystery. That some event is going to take place one day. And when that event comes, it will be in just a moment. We are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. But the resurrection of Jesus is a foretaste. The Bible calls him the firstborn from the dead. He's the first to be resurrected. He's the firstborn from the dead. And after Jesus is the rest of us who have the faith in God. Amen. Amen. So, you can see the person has finally found the scripture. He's the head of the body, the church, all right, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. That in all things, he might have the preeminence. In other words, he will be the main person because he was the first to rise from the dead. In that sense. Amen. Verse 19 of that verse. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Amen. So let's go back to verse 58. I want to show you a mystery. All right. Now it says, for this corruption shall must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality now how many I want to welcome all those with us on FaceTube, face, Facebook I said FaceTube YouTube <laughs> YouTube, <laughs> Facebook Twitter LinkedIn and what else TikTok Instagram, you are very welcome to join us. I hope you are a good person watching with good intentions. Hmm. Now, oh yes, greetings to all those, greetings to all those in New Zealand because it's, 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 um, 
What time is it here now? It's like 4 a.m. there. It's at 3 a.m. there. So if you are in New Zealand and you are watching, you are a superhero. Australia, all those people, they are, it's better, I mean, it's past the bedtime long ago. Yes. Americans, it is, it is morning. It is now their morning service, around 9 o'clock. Yeah, it's fantastic. There are many travelers in this room. We'll be going to all those places. Amen. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Ah, when you look at yourself in the mirror, how many can see things a little off, off the design? Have you noticed that? Mm. It's going this way, it's going this way, it's changing, it's changing. And I remember something that the prince said about corruption. He said, corruption cannot be corrected. It can only be halted. Wow. You see, like if you take fish or tomatoes or any perishable thing, you can't reverse the corruption. You can only halt it and keep it at the same state. But you can't reverse. And the corruption of the human race and the human body cannot be reversed. It can only be halted. That's why there's a lot of places in the Bible which talk about preservation. All right? So this corruptible body is going to be changed. And when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, that means it can't get spoiled again. Hmm? And this mortal, with that mortal means can die. Can die. This can die will put on cannot die. Then shall be brought to pass the same, or the quotation from the Bible, from the Torah, from the Old Testament. That is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of, sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Verse 57, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And verse 58, therefore, because of resurrection, my beloved brethren, be steady, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The, the, the works you are doing in the Lord are the ones that are not in vain. Everything else is in vain. I'm sorry to say to all those of you who are employed elsewhere. But the Bible is telling us here that it is your labor in the Lord that is the one that is not in vain or that is not useless. Many years ago, a lady came by my house and I wasn't there. So she left a complimentary card of her, she met a, her complimentary card. So I remember it was in the evening, I looked at the card and it was one of these top banks and she was one of the important people in the bank. Yes. But then I heard a voice. I, I, I remember, I remember it so clearly. I heard a voice and the voice said, Sand Castle. Sand castle. It's a sand castle. And it's interesting. I don't want to mention names and I don't want to mention banks and I don't want to, but that bank does not exist today. Sand castle I know because I used to play with my children on the beach and I used to build, I used to build 
sand castles. I said, let's build a castle. And we would build out of sand a nice little castle, you know, a, for, a fortification on the beach. Yes. I used to go with my children to the beach. And we would do that. But then a wave would come. And all our labor <laughs> hmm, would be canceled with one wave. Amazing. Amazing. What a castle indeed. And we have spent so much time making that castle. Yeah. So the Lord said to me, sand castle, it's a sand castle. It's something, and you see, it was like a message to me about every earthly thing that looks great. It is a sand castle. It goes up like this, and then it is nothing. So brothers and sisters, God gives us, because of resurrection, a very powerful uh, word. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. It says, therefore, therefore, because today is Easter. I don't know if you know, understand it. Good Friday, Jesus died. Sunday, he rose from the dead. Uh -huh. So, it, it means people are going to rise from the dead. Do you understand Easter? It's very, quite simple. Mm -hmm. That's why we wore black on Good Friday. Like Jesus is dead. Then white on Sunday, the resurrection. Yes. So, as we come here today, right, we are saying that God is telling us that since there's going to be a resurrection from the dead one day, and all of us will, will, would experience it, then we must be steadfast. We must be unmovable. Why, why, why unmovable? Because there's always something trying to move us. How many have felt something trying to move you? Like it holds your bottom and tries to push you to the... To the, to the side always trying to lead you away from God lead you away from your church amen lead you away from bearing fruit even as pastors there's always some type thing that preach about something else preach about something else what are you preaching about Many times, in, the, in recent times, I've had the Lord encouraging me about what I preach and telling me that I should look at the fruit of what I preach and see one of the largest, if not the largest, I don't know. No one can really know. One of the largest churches, the fruits, Yes. I was speaking to one prophet. He said to me, I was telling him that well, the Lord was encouraging me I should keep on praying. He said, look, I am learning. I thank, he said, I thank God for you because since I got to know you, I am just learning how to do the church. Yes. He said, I, can, I could hold all night, 50, 50 nights. <laughs> 50 night all night. People will come. He said, on Sunday, there's nobody, nobody come to the church. The church will be empty. He said, because it's a clinic. He said, I will call some of the members, some of the people. They will tell me, I had a problem. That's why I came. The problem is over. So, I'm in my church. Yes. I mean, he was laughing. I said, he said, the message you are preaching, that's a message. He said, I'm, we are learning from you how to make a church, how to build a church. Yes. He said, you see the people with photographs, certificate, everything, pray for it. He said, on Sunday, then he did his hand like this. He said, empty. There's nobody in the church. Yes. There's always something trying to say, move from what you are doing. Stop preaching what you are preaching. What is, the, what is the use of all these messages? But you see, that's a message 
which is giving rise to certain things. And there are so many other things that I said. I would say, I will laugh at myself. Then he would tell me something. He said, look, you don't know <laughs> what you have and what you are doing. He said, we are learning. He said, since I learned from you. He said, he said, <laughs> I don't want to say all the things that he said. Yeah, I can't say them. Oh, yes. Very wonderful. So there is always something trying to move you. Don't preach this. Don't do this. Don't do Swollen Sunday. Don't do Basenta. I heard that Wabawa song. Basenta and tea. We know what we want. Yes. We know what we want. So God is telling you, don't be moved though. If you are moved, you'll be moved from your salvation. Look at the verse. Underline unmovable. Unmovable. I've been a Christian for so many years. Look at it. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Since I knew Jesus from secondary school, I was about 16 years old. I was about 16 years old. 19... 78, 79. That's when I came to know Jesus. Character, one characteristic of my Christian life has been always abounding in the work of the Lord. Like from the time that I knew Jesus, when is when I joined a, a group called Calvary Road. I mean, we were going for meetings and rehearsals from Monday to Friday, Monday to Saturday. It was on Sunday that we didn't go in anywhere. We rested on Sundays. At that time, at that time, we didn't have any church. Rehearsal today. Practice tomorrow. Prayer meetings. Uh, we decided to have a, a outreach in Kumasi. We said we were going to Kumasi to reach out to the university. We will pray from morning to evening. Speaking in tongues. That's all I knew. I've always been abounding in the work of the Lord. When we finished prayer, I don't know how many days or weeks we were fasting and praying and praying for this program in Kumasi. But I, what I remember, I don't remember what the topics were. I don't remember how much we prayed but what I remember, do you want me to tell you what I remember? Because something unusual happened. And as we were praying, not when we went. Yes, not when we went. It was more of we. And I don't, I don't remember any large number of people being saved. But we still organized and we still went. But something strange happened. Do you, how many want to know what happened? Yes. Because we were largely a singing group. But what I remember happened was that the singers, some of the singers lost their voices because of the prayer. Yes, their voices, their voices became husky. Because of the prayer. The voices were lost. That is where I learned, because I knew one, one singer closely, and she said to me that we are eating bananas, but apparently bananas heals the vocal cords. So they were eating bananas to cure the, because otherwise they couldn't sing. They had prayed until the voices were gone and it was now time to go and sing. Which song were they going to sing? Take up your cross, follow me. Jesus, the lover of my life. Greater love has no man. And they composed all. I was there when they came to compose Take Up Your Cross. I was at rehearsal and the singing man came and he said, okay, I have a new song. Everybody, there's a new song. So the singers, we sat down patiently. He'll come to the organist. He'll play this. Play this. He play it for you. Then he'll come to the bass guitar. And he'll take the guitar and, and play. This is how to play. Then he'll go to the drum. And he'll say, play. Then he'll come to the singers. Okay, soprano, sing like this. Alto, sing like this. Hum, bass. Stick, all of us, we're all sitting there. Then he started, take up your cross, follow me, deny yourself. That was that the very day that the song, that song was taught. Oh, yes. That's my Christian life. I'm explaining to you, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I wasn't 
smoking. I wasn't smoking, drinking, fooling, boozing. We have a song like that. <laughs> Always abounding in the work of the Lord. It's been from Monday to Saturday for years. Monday to Saturday for years. I'm explaining to you this verse. Be steadfast because a day is going to come when the resurrection will mean everything. John 5, 29, it actually says about two types of resurrection. Resurrection to life and the resurrection to damnation. It says, it sh and shall come for they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, underline it. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Both resurrection. Are you, when, you, when, you, when they raise you up, will it be for the resurrection of life or for the resurrection of damnation? We'll wake you up and you think you are going to, you are, you are, you are ah, at last. I'm awake. When you get up, you slaps. Every unpleasant person you can remember and every wicked person you can remember is kinder than the smallest devil you will meet in hell. Because when I've had demons manifesting, I hear them say, I'll kill him, I'll kill her, I'll kill her. They always want to kill you. And to kill somebody, you must be very wicked. You must be extremely wicked to kill somebody. Oh, they are very wicked. One guy, he was stung by a um, stingray and he was dying. They took him to the hospital and then he went off. He suddenly found himself standing in the hospital. He was standing, he said the, the, the floor, he was, he was barefoot because it was just his, his body. And he was standing on the floor. He was barefoot in the realm of the spirit. And he said, where am I? It was dark. He was about to descend. Where am I? What's this? Then you know what? A voice shouted, shut up. You see, it has begun. Shut up. And another voice said, you are in hell. Shut up. You deserve it. Yes. That guy was saved. They were able to resurrect him in the hospital. You see, life and death, we have different things that show that you are alive or you are dead. Your heart will stop. Your breathing will stop. So at different times, sometimes you think the person is dead. Maybe the, the, the breathing has stopped. Then the heart has to stop. Then eventually it's the brain that has to stop. So that's why we look at the, eye, the eyes, the pupils. You put a light or your phone and you put it on the eye to see if the eye will move. If the eye is not moving, then it means that the death has entered the brain. That's why the eye doesn't move. The pupils. The pupil is the hole in the hole. No, I know I'm talking to a lot of art students, these type of history students and uh, economics, this type of economics and whatever. They don't understand a lot of things. <laughs> Spanish students and so on. The resurrection of damnation and the resurrection of life. Turn to your neighbor and ask him, now, now you are told, will it be resurrection of damnation or resurrection of life? Hmm. Now, I hear the Holy Spirit telling me, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 14. Jesus is the firstborn. He's the first example of resurrection. You and I will also 
be resurrected. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 15. No, for verse 14. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So you see, if we believe that Jesus died and rose, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus, all right, will God bring with him. This is what I was trying to say, that you believe that Jesus died, slept, and rose. This, in the same way, in the same way, those which sleep or die, change the version, change the version, I think it's not helping you. Yes. What is that? Change the version, not the verse. <laughs> Since Jesus died and broke loose from the grave, God will most certainly bring back to life those who died in Jesus. Wow. This is why... We always want to make sure that someone died in Christ. How many really will die in Christ? How many really will live again? Souls are parted to eternity. Souls are parting as we live today. Souls will part as the days go by. How many really, put my verse, put my verse. How many really will die in Christ? You see, who died in Jesus? How many really will live again? Oh, yes. How many really died in Christ? So when somebody dies in Christ, we have a lot of hope. Because we know, according to this verse, that most certainly you see the person again and most certainly he will bring back to life those who died in Jesus. That is why you must pray that you never bring forth into this world a human being who will come up and not know Jesus. It would be better for you not to have a child than to bring up a child who will not know Jesus or depart from Jesus. Yes, I believe so. I believe so. And sometimes when we have pregnancy and we lose our pregnancies, sometimes there are these type of children. It's gone. It's better. I don't know, but I, sometimes I, I, you have to use that to console yourself. Yes. What else will you say? Do <laughs> huh? you have any other consolation? You just thank the Lord. You started bleeding. The whole brother came out. That's all. You never know how this child is going to grow up and behave. So if the Lord has chosen that, okay, off. See you in heaven. And then by the grace, the Lord will bring back to life those who died in Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend. From heaven with a shout. Hey, that means that Jesus is coming personally. As for resurrection day, he's coming himself. Wow, this one not about angels. Jesus himself will descend from heaven. Wow, I mean, I, I, I don't know where heaven is because we've been sending rockets and we are not finding heaven. He's going to come out of heaven. And an archangel... And a trumpet, two things. There will be two sounds. An archangel will shout. Now an archangel can be as big as one foot in Kumasi and one foot in the sea at Osu. The leg up into the air. Yes. Because the Bible says, I saw an angel standing in the sun. Do you, do you know how big the sun is? He, he, put, it, he put his feet, on, he stood on the sun. Yes. The, the sun is 1,000 times bigger than the earth. He says, and I saw an angel standing in the sun. 
It's just not a small creature. So when he shouts, I think some people's eardrums are going to. Those of you who can't hear, you hear. You can't say you didn't hear. Wow. Are you excited about that? I'm excited about that. And there's going to be a trumpet. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. And then we who are alive and remain. So if I'm preaching, all right, and Jesus comes, what's going to happen is I'll be standing here doing a move like this. Then suddenly, that is for those who don't go. This is for those who don't go up. I don't know whether the people upstairs, I don't know whether they will, they will stay behind for the rapture. But I watched, I watched a movie years ago about the rapture and there was a guy on stage preaching. And do you know what happened when the rapture came? As he was preaching, then suddenly there was nobody on the stage and the microphone fell like this. And there was nobody. <laughs> and, and there were people there were people that the congregation became like half because the Bible says there were ten virgins five were taken and five were left I think it is mostly the people at that, the far, and they, they, are, they are not even, I think maybe they are even on their phones now, as I'm even preaching about resurrection. Hmm. Then we which remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So when we are going, we'll be doing like this. Will be moving like rockets. It's not that they are going to discover rocket science. Some of you, I'll tell you, you see, you can try different styles when you're on the resurrection. You can do like this. You just be moving as if you are sitting on a chair. Others who feel like diving, you do something like this, like you are diving. If you are doing karate, you can do, and you just be moving at top speed. Wow! And some people will be sitting here. No movement. I think especially those on the far corner there. And then those at the far corner there. The resurrection may not affect them. I don't know about the instrumentalists. Now... When it happens, you have to come and appoint a pastor. And if some of the pastors were left behind, then you, you surround them and you ask, them, hey, pastor, why, why didn't you go? If you are on an STC bus, and the driver is born again in Christ. Accra Kumasi Highway. You'll be going at top speed. And the bus driver will say, ah, and he's gone. And he'll go like this, he'll be sitting like this, he's moving. You have to appoint a new driver very quickly. If you're on British Airways, and you, most of them, they don't even believe in God. But I don't know which airline, maybe they may believe in God. Kenya Airways. Ghana Airways. I hear we are getting a new Ghana Airways. If by the grace the pilot is born again. Hmm. Oh, Yes. And then news 
They will come on and they will say, breaking news. There have been mass disappearances of people all over the world. Mostly found in charismatic and Pentecostal churches. Wow. Disappearances of people. Investigations are underway and we will be updating you as this story develops. Who be the news reader? Somebody who doesn't even believe in God. Hmm. Wonderful. So wherefore comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. Sit down everybody. Everybody say comfort. Comfort one another. Yeah. Comfort one another. And it's comforting to know that by the grace one day we'll be getting out of this world by resurrection power. Amen. Now if you have lost a loved one or there's somebody that you want to see again and all our prayer is that the person died in Jesus. If the person died in Jesus we are going to see the person. Now, one day I met someone who said, there is no God. Now, when such a person dies, your options of what to say are not comforting. You can't comfort the person much because there's not much to say. So you don't believe it. We have nothing to say. When you read these verses, you will not understand till you are one day faced with a funeral of people that don't believe in God. That's when you see that. Christians have a very comforting message at funerals. Yes. And non-Christians have no answer to death. No answer at all. Because it makes nonsense of everything that is being done in the world. No answer. Now, today before we end, or as we are ending, I want you to look at Romans 8, 11, and see the source of resurrection. It says, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. The spirit, there's a spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Change the version. Maybe it will say something a little more clearer. Change the version. The spirit of God who raised up Jesus from the dead is living in you. So the God who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your bodies. He will do this because of his spirit who lives in you. So the agent... Who raised up Jesus is actually in you. And he is also imparting resurrection life to you. How many will be happy to be alive after resurrection? How many want to be alive? Oh, yes. But I have some good news for you that even now, you can be tasting glimpses and tastes of resurrection life. Do you want some taste of resurrection life? Oh, yes. So let, let us look at a small taste of resurrection life before we close. And as I say these words, I want you to believe that it is happening practically in your life. It says in Revelation 22 and verse 1, it says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal. Amen. Wow. Is it not fantastic? fantastic. Amen. Amen. And and let's read chapter 21. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, The tabernacle of God is with men, 
He will dwell with them. All right? And God himself will be with them and be their God. Now we are here. God is with us, but he's with us in a certain way. A lot of devils here. A lot of evil. That alone should teach you to have faith in the creation of God. Because even if you say you can create the flesh, what about the invisible things like love that you, you can't actually like quantify? How, how do you create love and hate and fear? Jealousy and all these invisible things that are really, they are so real in our lives and that's what's controlling the world. Who made them? Even if you say it comes from an explosion. Okay, let's have an explosion. Have you ever seen a Mercedes Benz? Let us assume that the latest Mercedes Benz came from an explosion. But have you seen a Mercedes Benz with love? And jealousy? And hatred? So, where does that come from? There's, there's something invisible that's also at work. And he said, I saw. He said, God will be with them. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So receive, you see, beginning from now, you are going to enjoy resurrection experiences and tears in your eyes wipe away. Amen. Receive the grace to recover. Receive the grace to recover from what puts tears in your eyes. Amen. 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 You know, you see that people are changed. I was watching a movie. Everybody had something. This one did something. So I'm going to kill this person. Then another person does something. I'm also going to kill this person. I have to pay for this person. Then this one does something. And this one does. I mean, it never ends. Receive the grace to overcome all your tears and your pains. Amen. Because on the resurrection, there will be no more tears. No more crying there. Where is she? No more crying there. Crying there. Yes. We are going to Come on stage. Come on this side. Come on this side. No more crying there. Amen. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. Mm. No more crying there. We are going, going to see the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to see the King. Oh, yes. There will be no more dying there.
Oh yes. Lift your hands. May you experience a new life in which you have more than you need forever in your own backyard. Every month it comes. Everything comes every month. Everything you need and more comes every month. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. No more curse. No more dying. No more sorrowing. And no more fear. Let resurrection be real to everyone. Lift your hands, everyone. Thank, thank you, Jesus, for showing us the way of salvation. The blessing of salvation. The blessing of the resurrection. We are grateful and we are thankful. In the mighty name. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for everyone who is steadfast and movable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. And everyone said, I have resurrection life. Oh, I have resurrection life. I cannot hear you say, I have resurrection life. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, every head bow for a moment. If you are here today, you want to give your life to Jesus. Maybe somebody invited you on this special Easter Sunday. Because it's Easter. But you want to say, Pastor... I don't want to rise to the resurrection of the damnation. Resurrection of damnation. I want Jesus to save my life. If you are here today, you want me to pray with you for your life to be saved. For Jesus to save your life. Then, raise up your hand like this. Raise up your hand like this. And I'm going to pray with you. It's just for two seconds. I'm giving you an opportunity. No one should joke with this. Oh, the Bible says some will rise to the resurrection of damnation. If you've lifted your hand and you want to lift your hand to say, Jesus, take my life, then I want you to lift your hand. And if you've lifted your hand, come to me in the front here. God bless you. Come, come to the front. your eyes and say this prayer with me say and lift your hand like this lift your hand like this say Jesus please forgive me for my sins I give my life to God today please write my name in the book of life today resurrection Sunday I give my heart to God I give my heart to Jesus Please write my name in the book of life. Now say after me, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. I reject you. I refuse you. I belong to God from today. I am born again and a follower of Jesus Christ. Now lift your two hands like this. Say, Jesus, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, Jesus, I receive you. Jesus, I am your follower. Jesus, I am your servant. From today, I belong to God. I will serve God. Thank you, Jesus. 
for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you're online, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, wherever you are, you want to say, zoom in to them, please. Come on. You want to say, Jesus, I give my heart to you. I want to serve you and I want to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.